Hey, what's up? Welcome back to Ripe Reviews. I'm Joel Escola. And I'm Sean O'Rourke. And today we're talking about the amusement park, directed by George Romero, the lost film that has been rediscovered. Actually, it was rediscovered in 2017, I believe, uh, but it's now on Shudder as of 2021. Uh... Yeah, man. They it's a Shutter exclusive, um, and the listeners we don't have a promo code or anything because we're not sponsored by them. Maybe uh, we should be at yeah. some point. <laughs> that would kind of make sense. That would be pretty fucking cool. Oh yeah, you know I uh, I finally used my free trial, so I, they, they finally got me hooked, Joe. They finally got me in the system with this one. They get you, man. They get you every time. You know, you you you, you want either something you want to watch or they have some kind of exclusive thing. I mean. What better way to fucking get you to sign up for Shudder than, or even a seven-day trial, than a, a a lost George Romero film? True. Yeah, you know. Uh, you know, I didn't even know this thing existed. Like, how recently did they even find out about this? Has this been a known thing or what? Well, according to the to the interwebs uh, with a Z, uh, they found they, they, this was uncovered in 2017. An old 16 millimeter print of this. Uh, film and it's film i'm using film uh, in light air quotes because um this was commissioned right i did read that yeah this was commissioned by the i believe it was a lutheran church of pennsylvania uh and they were like yeah george romero come here make us a fucking uh, uh educational film about getting old and and and, and this is what he made I think he kind of succeeded. Dude, he fucking nailed it. And let me just get right out in front of it. If you are looking for uh, George Romero, the the horror side of George Romero, you are not going to find it here. Uh, You will find the psychological side of George Romero here. It's very art. It's an art film. To the forefront, right? Yeah, it's a, it's 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 almost like a surrealist depiction of getting old and all the horrible things that can happen to you. God, the most god awful things. I think the last art film or surrealist film that we have covered was uh, Tetsuo the Iron Man. Whoo! I think that was the one and only one we did, <laughs> and this was, is going to be the second one for sure. Going back to season one. Wow. Oh yeah. Uh, only I just want to I just want to preface it with the fact that like you know there's not a lot of dialogue in this film it's very much uh, visual storytelling and if you're not into that kind of thing steer clear of this film because you are not going to be into it you're going to be scratching your fucking head you're going to be wondering why people aren't uh, th- there's no there's no there's no uh, 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 audible uh, narrative it's all uh, told visually. And two amazing results. Like, I can't believe that George Romero had the balls to go in and do something like this for the church and be like, oh, here you go. Uh, yeah, they, yeah, that's it. There's your film for you, kiddo. Right. When you put it into context, that is a little mind blowing. Like, yeah, fuck it. There's no way they're going to approve this, but eh, it's my vision. It's like George was like, fuck it. I'm going to make my interpretation of 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 aging in into this into a film that he really there's a lot of him in this that he really wanted to do i I, like watching this i was like yeah these are this whole the the context the situations the way that it's shot uh the setups and everything are very like this is george in his element doing his thing and not giving a fuck about anything like he's just gonna make this film the way he wants to make it right oh yeah big time yeah uh, just a couple things real quick. Uh, Bill Hinsman shot this fucking film. Uh, who's Bill Hinsman? You're saying to yourself, scratching your head? What? Question mark? He is the zombie in Night of the Living Dead. The the, the first zombie we see in Night of the <gasps> Living Dead. The one that gets the keys? That takes Johnny's keys? This is true. Yep. He fucking crawls on that fucking uh, 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 tombstone and, 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 try, and attacks Barbara. And Tony. He attacks Tony from half the movies. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. He's got that broom to knock him away. In the extended cut, yeah. The hack the movies cut of that, yeah. But yeah, he's behind the camera on this. It's just, it's just, uh, that was kind of bonkers to me because I was looking through the credits. I was like, who, who of the old crew w- w- was, was on there? You know what I mean? Because, uh, you know, this is post Night of the Living Dead. Right. And you would assume that George would want to work with the same people if, if it worked out, you know? 
But he's trying. To, he's also trying to pay the bills, you know, at the same time. Right, because all that shit that went down with it becoming like, uh, ro- what was the uh, word for it? Um, oh, uh, public doma- domain. Right, yeah. because it came, it became public domain, and he just basically did. Like, I don't think a lot of people realize that. And then he he lost a ton of money, and then he was basically like you just said, he just needed money. You know, he he didn't really uh, start taking off again until you know he did Dawn. Yeah, he was doing, he, and that and that comes later in in the later seventies. You know what I mean? He's doing commercials right. and all kinds of shit. So he picks this up in nineteen seventy two uh, and releases it and gets paid, but it doesn't actually. You know, it gets shelved. Um, and then again, uh, like I said in the beginning, it's it gets uh, found in two thousand seventeen. The sixty millimeter gets restored. It gets restored by the uh, the indie collect company that restores the 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 film and uh then in uh you know here we are 2021 and it gets released by a uh, shutter shutter puts it out in conjunction with uh yellow veil pictures and the george romero foundation and uh that's pretty fucking sweet that we uh that we can actually just watch this after being lost for so long you know almost a, a few decades you know if only we can get those goddamn reels out of that salt mine in transylvania <laughs> of event horizon but uh hey we got this you know what i think they're buried with george romero that's why we can't get him dude <laughs> yeah he took it he took it with him in the coffin just like just like gideon hackles man in tales from the dark side oh yeah uh speaking of which it you know if you're listening to this and you're like who the, who's george romero uh the godfather of the zombie film, folks. You know, six generations worth of horror uh, movies. Uh, come on. Get with the program. Creep Show, Tales from the Dark Side, uh, Dawn of the Dead, Night of the Living Dead, Day of the Dead, Land of the Dead, Diary of the Dead, Island of the <laughs> Dead. I mean, the man is a legend. Uh, in his own right. Monkey Shines. Monkey Shines. Martin. It, that's a great flick. Yes. Uh, I was. Somebody was telling me. Uh, uh, Newt was actually telling me about Martin earlier today. Never saw it. Sounds pretty good. Martin is an excellent flick. Martin and uh, Season of the Witch is really good too. And I believe he did Two Evil Eyes with Dario Argento as well. Yep. Oh wow! Lots of good stuff from 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 the big uh, the G man. It's a shame they couldn't find this before he passed, but I know. I, I'm still happy that it was uh, that they were able to do this. I would love to hear what he thought of this. Right, right, because now it's just hearsay. It's kind of like speculative. The whole thing, you know, mm-hmm. um, and how everybody else interprets it interprets it rather than himself rather than george himself right right uh so let's get into this little uh slice o life if you will yeah and uh you know this is probably just gonna be spoilers from here on out so if oh, you yeah. are interested head over to shutter pop it on it's only an hour get over to shutter it's like 45 it's like a cool 45 minutes without credits uh and it, it again to the forefront. It's a art film. It's not necessarily a horror film, but it sure is shit a drama film. And it'll make you think twice about uh, your life and getting old for sure. Yeah, um, I kind of love how this movie is bookended by this like narrator character. Kind of made me think of like you know Frankenstein, where they have that intro. It kind of it kind of evokes um, a little bit of that of that uh, anthology. Uh, vibe that uh, yeah. George George would go on to do later, you know. And again, spoilers, folks. If you don't want us, to, if you don't want to hear us talk about the film in depth, um, go watch the film. Go watch uh, the amusement park on Shutter right now, and then come back. We'll be waiting for you. We'll be here waiting for you. If not, uh, here we go. Yeah. Ignore that last part I said. If not, <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. I think that's fine. That's not necessarily a spoiler. Yeah, no. Uh, so we we basically that. Uh, that uh, beginning and then is essentially telling you about like you know kind of what Joe was even saying like hey maybe you should think next time before you're like mean to an old person yeah man I gotta tell you something this film really <sighs> it's scary yeah it's scary in the sense of getting older and not knowing you know where you're going in life y- you know right if you're not uh financially stable right or if you're not uh in a relationship or even if you are in a relationship and and ship and married you know it's this kind of bleak look into the into your future of 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 aging 
And the way that George does it, he puts it on the stage of an amusement park. Obviously, that's what it's called, the amusement park. And, like, right in the beginning, you get, like, this, this like, introduction uh, from this guy, this Orson Welles-looking motherfucker who's like, <laughs> I'm 71, and you should be nice to old peoples. And uh, if you're not, here's what happens. And then it's, you know, the movie happens. He even says, like, this is going to be uncomfortable. Yes. That's kind of the point. Like, we want you to, you know, slip into the shoes of this character. Yeah, it's very it's very uh unnerving, uh the whole thing. And the way yeah. that the way that George again, I, I said in the beginning, you know, he kinda he kinda just took it and fucking ran with it and did whatever the fuck he wanted. And the his interpretations of getting old are incredible. Like, you know, there's one point where okay, so like so dig, when it, it opens up in this, like, sterile white room, and this guy is basically talking to himself, and, and one part of himself is, like, all beat the fuck up, and he's like, I don't, I don't want to go out into the world sucks. Fuck it all. That's what Joe Petto looked like at the yeah. end of Silent Night, Deadly Night 5 after Pino just pummeled him. Oh, dude, he got brained, yeah, that, and he's got a little Band-Aid on his head. Yeah, it's Mickey Rooney sitting there. <laughs> So his alternate, uh, I don't know, life force, if you will, or or persona, if you will, is like, what are you crazy? It's it's awesome out there. Here we go. We're going on an adventure. <laughs> and he goes out into the 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 amusement park TM, and then has the voyage that this man has just gone through that he's just met. So it's it's pretty it's meta like that with like a ra- the wrap around, right? Yes. But um, you know, like I was saying, uh, the way that. George interprets getting old as far as, you know, needing to renew your license and, like, take the test to see if you're capable of driving and shit like that. Like, there's this old couple, right? And they're, si- and they're sitting in these seats. And the whole time, it's just, like, this deafening... Uh, sound of of people congregating and walking around, and there's people walking past the camera back and forth. And this old guy is trying to read this fucking uh uh, uh eye chart to 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 get graded by this guy in front of him to see if he can drive or not. He ends up failing, and he's like, "Yeah, you're never gonna drive again. Fuck you, your wife. Uh, you you're gonna be a a, a a passenger, a passenger. Yeah." And that's just to get on the bumper cars. And I thought that was I thought that was wonderful. Yeah. I was like, what a great fucking thing. So they're on the bumper cars. I just really wanted to break this scene down real quick. I'm sorry. I know this oh, is yeah. right reviews. I we don't get into super in depth, but you know, they're on the bumper cars and this old woman's driving and she crashes into the back of George Romero because he's fucking he's in the film <laughs> as himself. Oh, that was him? I didn't even pick up on that. Yeah, sure was. And it's like this whole scene of like a car accident. And George Romero gets out and he's like, and he's like, oh, what the fuck? You fucking old. You crashed into me. What the fuck's wrong with you? You couldn't see or whatever. And she's like, oh, no, no. You had a left blanket on and you were making a right turn. It wasn't my fault. And a literal cop walks yeah. out. <laughs> it's great because the cop's like, ah, you're fucking old. So I'm going to listen to this young guy who knows what's going on, you know? Yeah. Um, And like. They're talking about their insurance going up, and then the the main protagonist or the main ain't uh yeah the main protagonist is there, and he's like, I saw the whole thing, and his blinker wasn't on, and he's like, Let me see your license, and he looks at the license, and it's like, Oh, it says here you you wear eyeglasses. He's like, Where are they? And he's like, Oh, they're they're in my pocket. And George Romero's like, See, fucking blind motherfucking old people can't see shit. Yeah, he's full of shit. And then he like waddles off like with a sad you know. Like a sad, like, oh, man, like I screwed up. Oh, man, there is, like, heavy social commentary running throughout oh, this yeah. whole thing. He basically, like, kind of points out every negative uh, stereotype people have about old people and just, like, you know, piles it on top of this old man. Yeah, there's a great scene where, like, there there's, like, a dining experience outside. Now, mind you, everything that this guy experiences is paid for via tickets right and the way that you get the way that you get tickets to this amusement park is you have to trade in clocks uh so it's almost like you're tr- you're, you're trying to buy time because yep. you because you're getting older which is fucking it's brilliant 
brilliant. It's fucking brilliant. It really is. And and it's also has on top of that. Not only are they doing that, but it's like the guy buying them off of them is clearly ripping them off. And they, and it's that kind of thing. It's like, well, what are they gonna fucking do? They need to get in there. Exactly. The the they're they're running out of time is what they're doing, right? So they're taking any offer. The guy's like gives uh the attendant like a clock, and he's like, yeah, it's gotta be worth like twenty bucks. Or he's like, yeah, a dollar. <laughs> <He's> like, what? <laughs> and it only gets him like five tickets. And then the uh the main character he comes up and he's got like five bucks on him and he's like oh, oh i need to budget my money uh i i can only do half and it's like whoa man like jo- like like you've been saying joe george romero just went all in on this concept oh yeah dude of 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 people you know getting older and having to uh put away a quote-unquote nest egg you know what i mean yeah and and being taken advantage of, yeah, taking getting taken advantage of, not be able to uh, pay the full bill, and and surviving thereafter when they can't work and shit like that. It, some of these parts are really really fucking sad. I just want to bring up one point too. Like there there's a um there's a dining sequence where like there's this rich old guy and they're waiting on this guy hand and foot because he's clearly got the most tickets right. And then our our main uh, protagonist is like, here, I got some tickets. And they just give him, like, a fucking plate of beans and, like, French fries and, like, treat him (laughs) like shit and all this stuff. Toast. Yeah, toast. Oh, yeah, the bread. And he, like, tries to share it with, like, other old people and they, like, take all his food. Yeah, then there's this, like, weird part towards the end where, like... It's almost like he goes into a dream where everybody disappears in the amusement park. And then these, like, motorcycle guys come up and, like, harass him and beat the shit out of him. Oh, I love this. You know what I interpreted? I The way the way that I saw this scene was, like, this is death, right? Coming for him. Yeah, well, they actually show, like, a character dressed like death. With, like, it's like a Halloween circus mask kind of oh, yeah. thing. But... It's very cheesy but effective because we see him earlier on on the merry-go-round and, and what right. have you. We see Frankenstein at one point. The monster's <laughs> in there. It's true. But, like, this particular one, uh, death is looming with these with these Hell's Angels motherfuckers because it's like, well, what's scary what what do people what do old people worry about? Oh, I don't know, getting fucking ransacked, I guess, by bikers. Yeah. I think that's anybody's concern, but especially if you can't defend yourself. Yeah, and I, I think that's really what it was, and it was like it comes for you either way, you know. Yeah. Uh, and 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 the way to make death frightening was oh well, let's make it people and let's make them ruffians, <laughs> and this guy can't defend himself, and they beat the shit out of this old man. <laughs> The one guy's got like a chain. The one guy's, guy's got, got a like a lead pipe, pipe, and they're beating yeah. him. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but I'm just like thinking back on it. it's like, God damn, that was overkill. Uh, well, it's cool because it transitions into like the health insurance thing, and like, oh, that was actually the most fucked up part of the whole movie. It's so fucked up, man. Like him going into the hospital and not getting the right care, and him not even having enough money, and they're like, "Here's a band aid. Here you go. Get the fuck out." <laughs> yeah. And he's like, "Band aid? I need to see a doctor." He's like, "You got your band aid. Move the fuck on, kid." And uh, the the character too, like as he's getting like as he's going through the film, like he has like kind of this um this whitish like blue makeup on to make him look even older. Which I think is kind of cool because as like they start to put like the blood marks on him later in the film, it really like makes him look like a ghoul. Yeah, it, it, you know, Jesus Christ! And then they like try to put it. There's another ride at the amusement ride, quote unquote, at the amusement park that's like a fucking uh, old people home, right? You know, where 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 basically you know old folks go to die there. You know what I mean? Like the, it's it's some tragic ass shit, and he goes in there. Well, it's a, it's a weird ass scene though because there's people like in beds uh, and then there's people like working out. Man, you want to talk about uncomfortable? That fucking scene made me uncomfortable as shit because it's like close ups of people, uh, old people like like debilitated old people that can't really mm. do anything for themselves. Uh, and that transitions to like this old woman caring for her husband in this apartment building. Oh yeah, because oh they have like a fortune teller scene. And oh, I couldn't... that's right. I'm sorry. The fortune teller. The, the, this guy. This this. It's uh... a super serious scene, but I couldn't stop thinking about the fucking fortune teller from Mallrats with the third <laughs> nipple. That's like a pepperoni. Hey man, maybe she's got that third nipple. Maybe she's telling Barbara Crampton's fortune. <laughs> I mean, I guess this is supposed to be the truth, and by the end of it, honestly, if I was that couple, we'd be parting ways. It's possible. Then then after that, she goes to the fucking mansion with, uh, uh, what's-his-face, who fucking brings the puppets back to life? Toulon's puppets? Maybe. Oh, I think so. Yeah, we'll get to that. Puppet Master? Okay. Anyway, uh, she 
tells these kids futures and this guy and the old guy our protagonist walks in and it's this whole thing of like this old woman caring for her husband in this apartment that she can't afford and the and the guy who runs the building and it's a big dump too by the oh, way it's a fucking dump and like it, you know the guy who's running the building is like i don't get paid you know insurance is crazy taxes are crazy and these people pay me ten dollars a week i don't give a fuck i'm not like supporting them of fixing this shit meanwhile like old guy is just dying of whatever he's not taking his pills his wife is fucking freaking out she literally has to run down the street to call the doctor on a fucking payphone because she doesn't have a phone in her apartment yeah and it's like she keeps going up and down this flood of stairs because every time she calls this doctor he's like partying with some friends and he's oh, like dude oh yeah your husband's dying <laughs> all right whatever and hangs up on her <laughs> he's pretty trade as this like woo woo fucking like i don't know what uh, i i guess carnival guy right like he's having a party oh yeah yeah they got popcorn cotton candy <laughs> turkey legs in there oh yeah man for sure they're having a good time anyway it's very it's it's depressing for sure and while she's like running back and forth he keeps like getting sicker choking more coughing more and like overlaid on this whole scene is the landlord like joe was explaining doing this TV interview uh, with a reporter, and the whole time he's like, yeah, yeah, What are, they're like, what about that creaky stairwell? He's like, eh, it's not my problem. Fuck and it. And so, like, the woman's going up and down it. You know she's dying shortly thereafter. She's having a heart attack. The guy ends up, like, dying in bed. It's like, fuck me. I mean, they're holding hands, so there's a little bit of something there to, like, trying to, like, to uh, weaken the blow. But it's still like, whoa, that's intense. But, like, it's funny because we cut back and, like, the couple, like, runs out of the tent. And the dude's like, get the fuck away from me. Like, I don't want to be with you. Fuck that. Like, that that sucks. And then the old man is fucking sitting on a bench and this kid just, like, fucking runs up to him and tackles him and, like, knocks him off the bench. I didn't get that part, but, yeah. I guess it was just, like, now he's mad at the world because the old man is, like, I don't know. Yeah, that was a little odd. That was That was weird. But then we get, like, little things of, like... You know, the old man just being like, I want to, you know, interact with people. And, oh, little kids, uh. that's fun. Like grandkids. You guys want some peanut butter and crackers? And some guy's like, you're a fucking creep. Get out of here, old man. And then some fucking rats eat it. Yeah. <laughs> They're like sitting there eating the peanut butter and crackers. I was like, what the fuck? How did that happen so quickly? A giant a giant rat. And then they move in with Peter Weller, man. <laughs> yeah, that was the uh that's where they came from, this old 70s film. Ah, I don't know. Timeline might match up. It's pretty damn close, it's right? Very, it's very close. It's within a ten year span. That's a lot of that's a lot of years for that rat to get big. Well, may, maybe those two rats that ate the peanut butter and crackers fucked and then, you know, <laughs> one of their offspring got into his house. I think it's one hundred percent possible. We'll re- we'll revisit that. Yeah, sure. Uh, but, you know, there's a little bit of, like, you know, getting old and having to, like, go to, like, uh, a, a retirement village and or community. Yeah. Uh, and, like, and like people taking your money because, like, oh, you, oh, your house is old? Well, you need to fix your roof and you need to fix this and you need to fix that. And, like, it costs a ton of money and these people just don't have it. Oh, yeah, and there's, like, a pickpocket? Yeah, there's, like, a guy, like, stealing people's fuck. Like, that was very on the nose but, like, totally legit, you know? Well, it was also kind of implying there, too, in my opinion, that the guy worked there, too, and it was all, like, an inside job because there's a scene after that where he uh the old guy notices after his watch gets stolen that that this guy he was chatting with on a bench disappeared so then he's like walking around the park and then he sees the guy like handing out tickets to a show and he's like whoa whoa, wait wait a second oh yeah 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 it's uh he's like i want to do that because all my friends are doing it and uh i guess i have to because i'm old yeah it's it's weird it's just like one thing after another of just like like we're saying, you know, it's it's these stereotypes just to, I, w- I would say beaten over the head, but they're not. Like, most of them are done really well. It's 1972. True. And I, and I see people today in 2021 doing the same I, uh, fucking thing. It's relevant. And not only is it relevant, but it's like, can we please change? Yeah. Folks, wake the fuck up. Let's change ourselves. And I guess that's the point of this whole film and what the point George was trying to make was let's change the way that this outcome is going to be, right? Yeah. Let's change and let's let's treat let's treat people with a little dignity. Yes. Before I get to the final thought though, I just want to wrap it up with the fact that like he sees this little girl 
and he's like reading her uh, 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 three little pigs, three little pigs, and like eating chicken in a park and like having this picnic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I'll, that must have been some chunky chicken because he was really <laughs> holding on to that fucking leg after they leave. He was like, I haven't had a piece of chicken in forever. I'm starving. Thank you. And he reads through little pigs. George Romero must have loved that shot too because he held on that piece of chicken for like five seconds after the scene ended. That might be the same chicken in Night of the Living Dead that they didn't finish. It might be. <laughs> it might be. But again, it's like a powerful scene where it's like, I guess that's supposed to be like his grandkid that he's not getting to have spend a lot of time with because his oh yeah that's a good point yeah his children are like okay that's enough let's go all right let's go move the fuck along get say bye to grandpa whatever and he just breaks down crying and it's it's like it's pretty depressing dude like yeah it's it's like i don't want to get old <laughs> that's that's that, basically that's, what you walk away with right yeah i'm like man th- i don't want this to be my life which i guess is the point of this film right because then the final shot is him then basically going back into that white room and then it repeats yeah he's completely beaten down and then we get you know we get that wrap around again where it's like a twilight zone episode where he like that's exactly what i was thinking twilight zone or even tales from the dark side or creep show or whatever you want to call it uh true and again, like the, like he's sitting down and, you know, it's the shot from the beginning. And he's like, hey, how you doing there, kiddo? I'm going to go outside. What's the matter? And he's like, don't go outside. It sucks. It sucks. And it's him. And he goes out again. And the whole thing repeats itself. And then there's like a closing statement, uh, you know, from the guy. Man. Uh, so what'd you think, Sean? Let's get your thoughts first. Final thoughts. I thought it was fine. I I didn't necessarily love it. I didn't hate it. I was very in the middle of the road on this one. Um, I, I guess my biggest complaint about it, and maybe this is why this never got released, is that it's just, like, way too depressing. Um, It's well acted, and I like a lot of the ideas on uh, on display here. Um, especially like that whole bumper car scene is really just something out there because it's like they're just treating this like an actual car accident and it's just it's kind of an interesting angle um it's fantastic to me (laughs) no yeah like i like that kind of stuff and i like the um the part with the bikers because it's just like oh my god like this this is pretty horrifying stuff right now um and then there's like even a scene at one point where like a bunch of like old people are put on display yes. for, for like folks to laugh at, and then they like chase the old man, and it's like I don't know, like it's like a voting thing, and it was like, right. well, which one do you want to support? Like the rich old couple, the middle, the 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 uh, middle class couple, or the veteran? That's what was one of them, yeah, right? Yeah. The World War One veteran or yeah. whatever war. Um, I don't know. I, I probably will never watch this again, to be perfectly honest. But I'm glad I did watch it. It's it's fine. Go check it out on Shutter. Uh, like we said earlier in the episode, it's uh, it's a sight to behold. It it might open your eyes to like maybe how some people treat old people. Like honestly, like Joe said, this stuff's still going on today. And like, there's even a scene uh, where he he's on the ground injured and like literally nobody helps him out. Like everyone just walking around him. And you read stories about that kind of shit happening to, even to this day. Um, just if you know think about it it makes you think oh absolutely dude uh this is a very important piece in my opinion um i don't know if it's an important piece necessarily specifically for george but i think it's important an important piece uh for film in general uh again this was made in earnest right and given for the church and the church was like oh this is what do you, wait, you can't do this. This is too depressing. We can't do this. It's supposed to be nice. You know what I mean? Kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, no, this is the ugly fucking truth about getting old told in a surreal, cynical, f- cynical, impactful way, though. Yeah. You know, all the worst parts about getting older here. And it's one of those things where it's like, take a fucking look around, okay? And make sure. That you're living your life to the fullest, and you're and and you're not being a fucking asshole or a scumbag, and you're treating uh you know your elders with respect, and and uh, you know people need help, young, middle aged, and old, you know. 
the 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 themes in this well the theme I, we've all, we've obviously talked about was is getting old but the way that it's portrayed I, I i can't stress enough is 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 really brilliant and i haven't seen it done quite like that or quite like this rather it's a spectacle to behold again to the forefront it is an art film surrealist film if you will little dialogue very much a uh visual storytelling uh type of uh short film so if you're into that go for it if you're not go for it and see how it rubs you you know what i mean but man i really enjoyed this i couldn't believe how powerful uh this was and how relevant it was and how more people should see this fucking thing like it's a shutter exclusive so if you, so you know if you don't have shutter go sign up now and go check it out we're not getting paid by shutter i'm telling you as a friend and as a some, somebody who loves film go check it out it's definitely worth watching at least once for sure yeah i can agree with that it makes you think you know, and it uh, it really hit me. It really it really hit me inside uh, as far as getting older and 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 how in my perspective on things. So it's it, you know it's good it's good to watch something like this once in a while and uh, kind of I don't know if put your put put you back in your place is 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 a good way to say it, but uh, to at least let you step back and reflect a little bit. You know, yeah. And it's also uh, Romero's lost film, so there's also that kind of, uh, you know, element, of course. Oh, it's got that tasty lost film, uh, 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 you know, tag to it. You know what I mean? And I, you know, sign me the fuck up. I mean, that's why that's why I wanted to cover this in the first place because it was like, oh, uh, Romero lost film. Let's do it for sure. Uh, it was made for the church, and it was about getting old. But it was it's a brilliant piece. Uh, in and of itself, you know? And again, it's raw Romero. Like, it's everything that he wanted to do uh, and maybe didn't get the chance to a lot of the time in, in other aspects of his career. So so it's it's really great and definitely, I, I, I highly recommend it for sure. And do not forget hashtag save indie film. We need to find more shit like this. Uh, it doesn't matter who it is. I know there's a ton of lost stuff out there by directors that we uh, hold uh, near and dear to our hearts. So uh, so let's uh, let's keep that going through the indie collect uh, restoration effort for sure. And yeah, definitely uh, definitely go sign up for Shutter. Check it out, or uh, start your seven day trial with Shutter. And uh, just like I did, yeah, definitely check it out for sure. And yeah. We will catch you on the next Ripe Reviews.